Hi guys. Today we're going to review Zack Snyder's Justice League, and we'll get to that right after this. The beginning of a new year is when many people start thinking about their goals, and I'm no exception. Uh, the Goal Process 101 ebook has helped me clarify the best and most achievable goals for me, uh, plus helped me set a plan in place to accomplish them. I mean, this podcast is just one of the results of using the Goal Process 101 ebook. Uh, check it out at christiannerdsunite.com slash goals. It helped me. I'm sure it can help you too. Now, back to the show. Before we get into the show, I have just a couple of scriptures for you. First, Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. And Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. That second verse is very meaningful for me. Uh, that a, a brother is born for a time of, of adversity, whether it's a, a natural brother or a brother in Christ or, or a friend that's just like a brother. I, I always say you don't need a lot of friends, but you do need one or two really good ones. And one of my very best friends is going to be my guest this week. Uh, we have spent a lot of time together over the last few years. Uh, he's very special to me. He has shown up in the middle of the night at one of my darkest moments uh, when I thought I was going to be losing my wife. Uh, he's very special to me, and our conversation tonight is all about Zack Snyder's Justice League. We're going to get into some spoiler territory, so be aware. Uh, but I think most of you have probably at least seen the Justice League theatrical cut. And uh, you won't be super surprised by anything we're going to say, especially if you've been following the stories behind Zack Snyder's Justice League. So let's get right to it. And I'm back, and I have with me my very good friend, uh, Mr. Mike Schilling. He is the host of the Something About Something show. Uh, it's a live show that's on Wednesday nights on Facebook, and uh, he's the host, and um, it's on the Something About Something Facebook page. I'm actually the co-host, and I, I work with Mike. So, hey, Mike, tell, tell us, tell the people at home a little about yourself. Myself, well, I've been in IT for about 20 years. I'm a nerd. I'm a geek. Uh, video games, comics, uh, you name it. Um, we've been wanting to do a podcast for a very long time. So me and Ricky, it's been about three years now. Yeah. Third season. Like so that. Yeah. So we just up and decided to, we'd both been talking about yeah. it for a long time. And we just up and decided to do it one night. <laughs> It was a little ridiculous, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. Good thing you edit this thing. That's good. It's going to be really good when you edit it. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I no, don't edit these interviews. We just, don't do we just let them roll. <laughs> oh man, that's good. That's but good. Uh, things are the, the something about something shows a little a little different. It, it is different. It's how would you uh, describe something about something? It's. Um, this is Christian nerds, right? Okay. Yes. So we're a little bit different. <laughs> we tr we try to stay family friendly, but we kind of we kind of like playing the edges. But uh, there's no, a lot just, of poop jokes. Yeah, poop. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're we stay away from our big thing. We stay away from politics. We stay away from beliefs. We just and we stay away from. Anything that can cause a debate or an argument, unless it's nerd related, 
and we usually we have ground rules for that but we have a great group that comes and comments with us every wednesday night and uh it's been really fun so yeah absolutely definitely yeah. you should check out the show um it may or may not be for you yeah. but uh i i really enjoy hanging out with mike every wednesday night um it, it's been a blast over the last three years my friend well really tonight good. tonight we are going to talk about what we thought about Zack Schneider's Justice League. Are you ready to talk about that? I am ready. I'm, and, and I've am i been you're really a DC excited. Fan. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. T t tell me about being a DC fan. How does that, how does that feel in general? Because I'm a Marvel guy. Well, see, and, um, again, <clears throat> being a DC fan, uh, the early years were awesome. And um, when, when you say the early years. Well... Um, for me, it's like, you know, the Michael Keaton years, uh, Batman, the animated series years, um, uh, as far as animation and comics, yeah. um, probably the last comics I really enjoyed was the Batman 52. Yes. I'm a Batman fan. As you can tell, I'm saying Batman several times. <laughs> um, I try to get into the WB, um, series, but I, there's, there's too much content in it that i'm not um that i'm not a fan of mm. uh you know my, and there's my, a lot of it yeah yeah and i'm you know my my thing is let's comics and superheroes uh stand with them you know stand for themselves you know you don't have to add any type of agenda you don't have to add anything that uh you know just let the story stand for itself and yeah. and t just tell a good story but being a DC fan, um, I grew up, you know, I loved Superman, uh, Batman, uh, used to, you know, remember as a kid, watch super friends. Remember that? Oh yes. My yeah. friend, super friends. Yeah. Wonder twin powers activate. Now, now I can't watch it. <laughs> I can't watch it now. Cause it's, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, you know, it, my, is that because it, you're, it would be creepy for an old man to watch super friends? Or are you saying it's a little cringy? Both. <laughs> Both. Yeah, I, no. I've got some old fandoms that I I have fond memories of. And then when I go back and rewatch them, I'm like, man, that's not nearly as good as my memory was. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Um, you know, it's like Wonder Woman, you know, the Hulk. I'm talking about 1970s, the Hulk. I'm talking about 1970s, you know, Wonder uh, Woman, Linda Wonder Carter, Woman, Linda Carter. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, but as a DC fan, I mean, where it comes right down to it for me is that I'm, I love Marvel as well. And, and what's really hard for me as a DC fan is watching how well Marvel is executing and, and having their universe and how they're able to inter interweave everything from mm -hmm. their, uh, series on Disney Plus, uh, even when they were doing Agent of Shields that was on ABC at the time, uh, how they're able to keep a continuity. And then Warner Brothers have no clue what they want to do. And this is an example of what we're going to talk about tonight with Zack Snyder. Uh, yep. And if you get a chance, there's a great backstory, I think, in Variety about Zack Snyder and his struggle. Um, but I know tonight we're going to talk about more about the review and uh, yeah but so but the, so yeah. let's let's kind of go there so so the dceu has had kind of a rough go yeah they have theatrically yeah, yeah. um they, they got a lot of bad press bad you know bad yeah. fan backlash um I, personally i think a lot of that came from the studio putting restrictions on the directors yeah. that really shouldn't have been there. Yeah. You know, saying the movie can only be this long. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. You wrote a three hour movie. You can only have two. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I, I think there were a lot of limitations placed on people that uh, caused problems. Exactly. Now, of course the, we have with, with the justice league, it's a little bit different kind of situation. Yeah, it's, it's, it's and deeper. just to, to make sure everybody's on the same page, you know, when justice league was released theatrically, um, it basically had two directors. Yeah. It, we, it, yeah, it, yeah. They had one with Zack Snyder who actually, he was and it's still, it's funny. Cause even 
even when the movie came out, it was still Zack Snyder, even though he, he was left. still yes, he was still yeah. written as the director, even then, though probably yeah. what came out was not his vision at no, all. Not at all. <laughs> not at um, all. Not and, after and he, watching. Yeah. Not after watching his cut. Yeah. Definitely. Oh my goodness. And and he had he had a pretty tragic event happen in his family, yeah. caused him to leave the the film halfway through. Um, and then we had Josh Whedon come in Josh Whedon, yeah. and try to finish the movie. And yeah. when he tried to finish the movie, he basically rewrote a lot of it, reshot yeah. a lot of it. And, uh, we have a considerably different justice league because yeah. of that. So finally we have, you know, the, the hashtag Schneider cut, everybody was released the Schneider cut forever and ever and ever. And we finally have one four hours long and released on uh, HBO Max and the, uh, it, well, no, just HBO Max. Yeah. Um, and uh, it uh, it is a different, considerably different movie. And I, what is your yeah. first, what's kind of your first impression? Just if you just say, you know, if I just say, what did you think of Zack Snyder's Justice League? It's the Justice League that we deserved in the first place. That that's there's a, there's a Batman line somewhere in there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, this it's, is the DCEU we we yeah, deserve we or deserve, need <laughs> we need. Uh, uh, I I mean I you know when I first heard that there was going to be four hours long, I'm thinking okay, we're well, he's going to do it as an episode. You know, episode one, two, and three, and now it's exactly four hours long. And I find interesting in it is that he does have it separated yep. in different chapters, but they're not as far as broken up like you would go on right. Netflix, like, you know, episode one, episode two, episode three. But it was brilliant. And I love the little, uh, you know, every time that, you know, chapter one would have this title, <laughs> chapter two yep. would have this title. And I was just blown away. And, and I, you know, I was going to watch uh, the, the original Justice League after watching yes. this one because I want to see the because I've seen it before. I've seen the original before, but it's been a while and I thought I was going to go ahead and uh, watch it again. And, but after watching this, I don't I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to watch the original one. And I'm not saying that it was immaculate that they had some you know, I had some issues with some of the scenes, yeah. uh, not so much. There were bad scenes. They just didn't need to be in there. But, um, but for the most part, I really enjoyed it. And I think the big thing between the two films is that I actually understand now what's going on with the first one. I, that yes. is the key. I now know what's going on and I'm, we're there not was... talking and we're not talking about, you know, we're not talking about dumbing it down. You know, there's some movies where they add things that, there's no reason to. We're not done. We yes, yes. Keep the mystery. Keep yes. keep things the way they there, are. There, you know, there yeah. are things. And I say this often about movies. Yeah. There are some things you just you didn't need to explain no. that to us. Just show it to us. Yeah. Let us you know move on. Um, that's that's my big thing with the like the solo movie. Um, oh, yeah. I actually like the solo movie. It's but a good you, movie. You didn't you know you didn't have to explain why his last name is Solo. No, Especially you since you gave such a lame reason. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I, I definitely agree with you. I think no. that the, this longer cut, there are so many things that now they, they make sense. Uh, so many things are not explained so much as they just are clear. Yeah, they are. There were things that happened in the, in the theatrical cut yeah. that you went, why did that happen? Yeah, exactly. Well, now we see why it happened because there was a whole scene that didn't that needed to exist for you to understand why that was even a thing. One particular character I'm really glad that they emphasize on and they gave him some backstory is Cyborg. Uh, Absolutely. It, I, I think he, it was a hidden gem. Uh, if anybody should have a standalone movie, I, I think that actor, I can't remember his name, but I think the character Cyborg would make a great movie within itself. 
Uh, oh yeah, and and it was great. I mean, it had a real deep. For me, it was one of the deepest stories there. I mean, it, it was very deep. It was very sentimental. It was very relational. It, I think that was it. I don't know. It it tugged at my heart, and I thought it was a really good, um, especially if you look from a father and son aspect of mm-hmm. it. So, yeah, there's um, yeah. there was some uh, some article I read said uh, made a comment about. Uh, Cyborg was going to be the heart of the movie, and I definitely think he is. Yes, he is. It, yeah, it, I think, yeah. On the original one, you know, and of course, I don't know how much the viewers have kept up with the stuff that goes on behind the scenes of the uh, with Josh Whedon and the cast, and let's just say they didn't get along, and especially right. the actor who played Cyborg, because uh, Zack Snyder had an entire vision for for a different vision for Cyborg, and he really wanted yep. to get into uh, the depth of it, the heart of it, and uh, he really wanted to explore that character. And Josh Whedon, actually, if you look at it, when he got involved, Cyborg had little, little camera time. Oh yeah, a little time. Cyborg and, and Flash really were were minor characters, and really they in, were the most in instrumental the, in it. And that's the thing. Cyborg is so instrumental, and I didn't realize it until I saw, you know, I saw the Snyder Cut, and I'm thinking this makes so much more sense. Yep. And and you know, and of course we don't want to give anything away, but oh, you yeah, know we do. it. We do. This we is do. A, this is a spoiler. We're we're going to be. Oh, all really? I, oh, okay. I'm gonna. Yeah, I, I'm gonna. Uh, at the beginning of this show, I said uh, that this was definitely going to be filled with spoilers. So we're oh, going to okay. be okay. Well, so, I'm not going to. Okay, I won't hold so back then. Don't don't pull any punches. But I, I will say that one of the things that I liked about this was, uh, especially in the story, I felt like all of the characters had much better motivations for the for the things they did yeah exactly it made more sense like you said like yeah. um i always had a problem with the the villain steppenwolf yeah. yeah i did too it it wasn't clear why he was doing what he was doing yeah he was just do he, you know he was he was an evil guy to be evil yeah i want to destroy earth Full stop. That you know yeah. why? Why is that a thing? Give me a reason. Um, and now I I say you know in the in the the Snyder cut, it's very clear why he's doing what he's doing. Yeah, he's looking for he's, redemption. He's looking he's for redemption trying, and the approval exactly. of dark side. And yes. and and honestly, no one knew there was a dark side uh, because in the yes. original, he wasn't even he wasn't even in there. He wasn't even mentioned. Yes. And so, um, yeah, I mean, so much more depth. I mean, so much more depth. I have a greater appreciation for the movie. And and the thing is, too, uh, the also, I mean, the, also the big thing for me is that in the Snyder Cut, I see an organic relationship building. Yes. Where in and I in with the uh, Justice League, the original one, it was just you felt like they were just thrown together. And yeah. and it was just. You know, it was a quick assembly, and and here we go for the action. Yeah, and speaking of quick assembly, uh, one of the things I really liked in the Snyder Cut was we had a long period of Superman being deceased. Yeah. In the theatrical cut, it was kind of like he died, 30 minutes later he was alive again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It, it didn't it didn't hold weight. Yeah. Because he didn't we didn't see all the characters struggling yeah. because he was gone. Yeah. Well, you know, um, you have you'll have some people out there saying, "Yes, but Ricky and Mike, uh, you know, Snyder's was 4 hours and and the original one was like, I don't know how long, 2 hours." Yeah, 2 uh, hours, one, 2 hour 15 one, maybe. 15 I don't think minutes. it was over I don't think it was 2:30. I don't think so. We'll say we'll just say around two hours, I guess. Um, and, and you and yes, yes, but that's the problem, though. Um, you know, something as ambitious as doing the Justice League with all these characters, you have to cultivate, you know, some organic relationships. Yes. And, and so, 
that's when that's what sequels are you know uh, if yes. you're not gonna if you're not going to do a four hour Snyder cut you know put everything together and explain it then that's what sequels are for yes. and I think that's what I think that's what DC has an issue with is that for instance you know uh, you know the Superman well they're already talking about wanting to do a reboot of Superman yeah. again leave it alone you know uh, I know people didn't like Henry Cravel as far as the original Superman, you know, because of Zod killing Zod, but yes. give me a break. Look back at Christopher Reeves and he did some killing himself. He just did it in a unique way. Yeah. You know, um, you know, when you take a, about taking life, the same thing with Batman. I mean, if you really look at it, you know, Batman took, you know, took, you know, yeah, took I was it gonna say, um, so, so yeah, it, Michael Keaton's Batman. Well, maybe he didn't kill anyone. But, you know, just because the f sudden stop at the end of the fall killed them. <laughs> yeah. There's a cause and effect. There's a cause and effect. There's it's not a like, cause it's and not effect like, there. It's not like watching the A-Team. There's an explosion and everybody's okay. Same with G.I. Joe. Everybody yes. jumps out in a parachute. It's not the same thing. So Exactly. Exactly. So. Now, I, I, I am right there with you. I... I do think that, that, and this is something I have, I think the, the DCEU suffered from, from the get go. Yeah. Um, Warner brothers wanted to get to the, the justice league too fast. Yeah, they did. Now, when I, when I look back through the Marvel, you know, series, and then I, I hit Avengers and then I go back and I look through the DCEU and then I hit yeah. justice league. Um, there's really only about two extra movies for the Avengers. Yeah, exactly. But those two extra movies added all the little pieces together that you needed yeah. for it to be cohesive by yeah. the time they got to the Avengers. And then the Avengers told one simple story. Yeah, exactly. Which um, we've got, you know, we had... You have Batman v Superman, which was really two stories crammed oh, yeah. together. Yeah, crammed together. It, it was. Definitely. It was. You know, it was the death of Superman story and the Batman and Superman not getting along story, yeah. and they probably should have been two separate movies, and it probably really would have helped the Justice League. I think so um, too. This Justice, this four hours, just four hour Justice League movie easily could have been a justice league without superman movie yes where at the end you get the cliffhanger of we failed but we still have a chance we need superman and then had a Thank second you. movie yeah. that was bring superman back yeah. they've been and, brilliant and you know and, and yeah. right up front you know the first thing they do in the second movie is bring superman back so they have a, yeah. a, a second a, a finish uh, and i think that could have been could have been brilliant so. but they tried so. to cram all that stuff in too fast and that's the and that's the problem the difference between marvel and dc I, marvel looks at the details i mean there's several things that you and know, they're we, playing the long game they're playing the long game dc they, it, it's almost like and it, warner brothers is driving it and i think that's one thing about disney i will give them kudos for because they're letting Marvel be Marvel and do what they do well. Yes. Because they know, as far as they're concerned, making money, you leave Marvel alone and they'll make you money. Yes. Warner Brothers haven't caught on to that yet for some reason. Uh, you, you give the right person the helm and let them, hey, DC, you're going to be like Marvel. You're, I'm going to let you do your thing. Get after it. You know, yeah. whether we fail or not, we're going to give it a good try. And, and that's... You know, they need a Kevin Veggie is what they need. Yeah. They they needed they need somebody to helm that yeah. ship that's exactly. that maybe they're gonna direct a movie, yeah. but at the very least they're going to, to to be the producer who makes sure everything makes sense in the end. Yeah. And I think who, that's who the already problem. has the big long story yeah. arc. And uh yeah, I th I think that those are, are big issues. Uh, but I feel like this the Snyder cut helps kind of bridge that gap. It really does. You know, we we've got a a expansive story that is now 
for the most part cohesive and uh you know it we have explanations for things that didn't really make sense before yeah. um you know i'm not saying there aren't still some plot holes but every movie's got plot holes uh but i think there's, there's a lot to be said that that this is is a lot better setup um now there were some differences i actually did kind of do a I didn't watch the whole thing. I kind of skipped through yeah. the the uh, theatrical release, and I did notice there were some interesting differences. Yeah, I would love to actually see a side by side. Of, I know it would be gigantic, oh, like five hour movie, but a side by side. Yeah, you know, here's what was cut out. Here's what's different. These two scenes are the same, but this one's a little bit longer. This one's a little bit shorter. This one has words. This one doesn't. Well, the- I I would love to see something like that. One of the things I thought was really interesting was there's the conversation of bringing Superman back. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't remember how much you remember of, of each one, but in the theatrical cut, Wonder Wonder Woman Woman was highly against it. Yeah. In the Zack Schneider cut, Aquaman is highly against highly, it exactly and wonder woman is for it and yeah. i think that's a, it's a fascinating change yeah i i definitely think somebody needed to be against it that's you know you needed yeah. that a little bit of antagonism yeah and it makes in my brain it makes so much more sense for it to be aquaman since he's the one who didn't want to show up until he was until his hand was forced yeah, I mean, Wonder was, Woman yeah. was kind of in from day one. She was invested day one. Yes, she could see. She could see on the the on the horizon what was coming already. Yeah, she knew things bad things were happening. He wasn't even Aquaman wasn't even willing to admit there were problems at home. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. he's like, I'm not admitting there's problems at home. I really don't care about your problems where yeah. you're from. Um, well, you know, as, what's funny, you, you mentioned Aquaman. There was a scene, and it came a lot earlier, and I was surprised because there's some scenes that I remember that were getting close to the middle of the film that Zack Snyder actually brought closer to the front. One yeah, I things remember were moved for, around. Uh, like, for one, Bruce Wayne um, going to find Aquaman, and he's yeah. looking down on the village. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, I thought that came a little bit later. But in the film... It was a lot earlier, and he went and kind of one of the first that he's spoken to, and then very. It was a very long scene. I mean, you have you have ladies singing, you know, you have a choir. <laughs> it's, I mean, but it was more meaningful. It, it was yeah, it was really good. But I noticed that, and that's the things that I wish I can do side by side and go. Wait a minute, this scene, call it scene one hundred and two. It was actually in scene you know, 95 and yes. so you, you, and there's some stuff that actually was cut out from the first one. Yes. That I've noticed and, too. And there's, and there's things that there are parts where I go, wait, was that a reshoot or is yeah. that original footage? Exactly. That never, that was, is that a, is that a Zack Schneider re- reshoot? Yeah. Is that a original footage that didn't get used because Josh Whedon reshot something? And, and there's a major there's a major weird spot uh, with Superman returning. Oh, I know where where Superman grabs Bruce and says, "Do you bleed?" Which is a callback to uh, yeah. Batman v Superman, which is kind of cool. And interesting, yeah. maybe, but technically they had reconciled before he died. Yeah, exactly. So that that's that gets a little weird. Yeah, a little murky. There. <laughs> um, but uh, but that whole scene is significantly different. Oh yeah, you know I we mean, have we now we have Batman with energy absorbing gauntlets yeah. that can hold Superman at bay just a little bit exactly Uh, you know we've got a superman who never says a word until he gets his mind back 
which I actually think is much better. Oh, I think it was awesome. I think it was awesome. And you know, it's in, in it, you know, uh, Batman was talking about Lois was the key. Lois Lane was the key. And was it Batman say that or was it Wonder Uh, Woman? But so, well, okay. So, so that one's a little, that gets a little weird. Yeah. Because, because the flash technically says Lois is the key, but she's, he said it in that weird vision thing that happened oh, yeah, in yeah. Batman versus Superman. And yeah. then it comes back later that that's going to be a thing foreshadowing something else in a movie that probably is never going to be made, which is sad to me because <laughs> now is, there's, so now there's a movie I want to see now. I mean, a, I after watching that, now that's a movie I want to see. Yep. And w- let's, let's put that one off for just a minute. I want to talk okay. about that here in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, cause I'd like to dwell on it a little bit, but, no. uh, one, th- you, you mentioned Lois being the key. I think it was very interesting. This is another significant change of Superman coming back Yeah. in the original theatrical cut. Lois Lane <clears throat> doesn't just happen to be there. She is Batman's backup plan. If yeah. all else fails, we'll bring Lois in. We'll bring the big guns in, and we'll exactly, bring Lois yeah. in. And that's what yeah. they do in the theatrical cut. Yeah. Whereas in in this one, Lois is never their plan. Yeah. The Justice League never has the plan to bring in Lois. She happens to be there, and she steps up, and and she saves them. Yeah. Not because it was Batman's plan. No, she saved them because she wanted to save them. Yeah. She wanted to save Clark. Yeah. She, you know, it, it had nothing to do with Batman's got this ingenious plan, which I thought is brilliant change. I think what did so you too. think about that? I like that. I liked it better. It, it gave uh, the, the character of Lois a, a stronger character. Yeah. It, it you know, it, she weren't dependent on the ideas of Batman, his strategies. It was just something she was there because, because in the film, you know, she would visit the monument several times, yes, you know, several times, and and this particular time she did, and uh, and I think there was a there was a scene before that where uh, when they actually resurrected Superman and he basically uh, Star Labs in Central City and it just he just blew up and he was in the middle of the air. And that's when Lois saw him. She saw this figment of Clark or Superman in the air. And so I think that's how she originally saw that. Is that Clark? Is that him? And so later on, she, I think that's when she went to go find out and she went yep. to the monument and that's, that's the story there. But uh, yeah, a lot it's of different so changes, better. so much better. So much uh, better. The one in particular I thought was interesting were, was black, uh, Batman, not Batman, but Superman decided he's wearing the black costume. Yes. And and that was so different, you know, with uh, the first one, of course, you know, it's the normal, you know. The red and blue and yellow. Yeah. And, and, uh, and from what I've read, that is all a CGI change. It's not, you know, they didn't reshoot it. Oh, That's really? It's all footage that was originally shot with the red and blue and yellow so they were able, to, They were able to take that off in his mustache. That's impressive. <laughs> I do hear, speaking of, I did hear that um, there are a lot fewer shots in the movie, or maybe no shots in the movie, that have a CGI removed mustache now. Oh, good. Good. I'm not sure if it's zero. And see, this is a question I have. Um, did he actually manage to to remove everything that Josh Whedon shot, or did yeah. he still have to use something that Josh Whedon did just to because he didn't get to complete it the first time? That's a good question. I know a lot of people, I, I, you read the articles and it's all, yeah. he removed everything that Josh yeah. Whedon did from the movie. And I go, but did he really? Yeah. I, I, mean, I don't know. And I'm not sure that we'll ever know.
Mike and I talked so long that I had to split it up into two episodes. So join me next week and we'll continue this conversation. Now, don't forget, you can find all of our social links, our online store and links to our YouTube channel at ChristianNerdsUnite.com. And while you're there, click on the support tab, check on our Patreon, consider donating. Uh, every little bit helps us defer some of the costs that we have keeping uh, the show up and going. But before we go, I do want to pray a special blessing over you. May you be blessed with good friends. May you learn to be a good friend yourself. May you treasure your friends. May you be good to them. And may you be there for them on life's journey. And may God bring you closer to each other as you draw closer to God. We'll see you next week. 